Welcome to a new chapter where we study about how things move in a circle. This is circular motion. But before we go to the physics and kinematics of it, have you heard of this thing called the wall of death? This is a stunt which you may see in some circuses or some shows. Okay, so it's a container and all the cars are going in a circle around it. So you see down there, oh, there's bikes. The cars are going faster and faster. Then they get higher and higher, you know. At some point, these cars and bikes are traveling uh, vertically. So you don't believe me, uh, you see this guy, he will pan over and he's very shocked. His face is priceless. Can make me maybe, you see us here. Okay, okay. I'll let him enjoy his show. But this is called the Wall of Death. If you're interested to see more about um, how these people do their stunts, go check out the video in the description below. But before we talk about the physics, the, the whys and the hows, we need to upgrade our language a bit. So we need to learn how to talk about kinematics in a circle. So have we learned about kinematics before? Yes, we have. In some previous chapter, we have looked at things called displacement right displacement you go from one place to another we have looked at the thing called velocity you're moving at a certain speed in a certain direction and we also look at a certain thing called acceleration but last time we think in the stuva the kinematics the one dimension from here we move to here that's it now we're moving in a circle how to do that okay so let's begin our upgrade of our language from linear kinematics to circular kinematics all right let's come down here and write some notes here okay so I have a circle here. You can take notes if you want to. The very first thing that we need to know is last time while we say displacement, right? In a circle, how to think of displacement? Imagine you are at this point, let's call this point A. And after a certain time, you move to this point B along the path of a circle. How do you find the displacement? Aha, displacement will be along a circular path. This is what we call angular displacement. And oftentimes we use the symbol uh, theta. Okay, uh, we're going to use theta here, lah, angular displacement. So what does theta mean? So every circle will have a center. I'm going to draw the center as here. means I can draw some radius as dotted lines. And the angle at the center, we call this our theta, angular displacement. Why use angle? Oh, because it's circle, mom. They say, miss, can't we use the, the highlighted blue area? Can this is what we call linear displacement. Very similar to what we call last time. Okay, you travel from A to B, how far do you travel? That's linear displacement, a line. But angular displacement is the angle difference. How, what was the angle that you travel? So there's a relationship between the highlighted part. Let's call this arc length S. That distance travel, uh, the highlighted one. Uh, circular measure, we know S equals to R times theta. What is R? Uh? R is this either dotted line, here is R, here also R, radius of a circle, okay? So this is the very first equation you need to know. If you don't know it, write it down. This is our, how uh, angular displacement, this thing, relates to our arc length, which is a linear displacement. By the way, this theta is in the, is an angle in the unit of radians. Ooh, what is radians? Radians is another way to express unit. Okay, so long story short, let's summarize. This is called distance or displacement. No lah, distance travel. Because it's an arc ma. Distance travel equals to the radius times angular displacement. So let's write that out. Angular displacement. Before I move on, there's one definition that you need to know, which is what is radians? Ah? We say radian angle in radian. What is radian? So we need to define radian. So I'm going to do that on the right side. Now we can say radian is, if you think of a pizza slice, ah, okay, we draw a pizza slice like that. There's a very specific definition. So radian can be defined as the angle subtended at the center of the circle. In angle subtended means the small little theta there, lah, okay, that's your angle. Where its arc length equals to its radius. So you look at the pizza on the left side. Whatever angle that is, this radius R must be the same as this um, arc length S. 
So it's kind of like saying if if radius is one, then the arc length must be one. Okay, draw bigger. If radius is three point three two, arc length also three point three two. This is still one radian. See the angle never change, right? The pizza get bigger and smaller, but angle never change. That is one radian. This definition must this definition must know lah. Okay. A uh, quick example is three hundred sixty. Usually say go one full circle, right? That is in degrees. That is equivalent to two pi. In radian, we don't write the unit, but two pi. If they we didn't write a small circle, oh, that means it's in unit of radian. Not sure how to use calculator to convert between degree and radian. Let me know as a friend. Okay, another thing we need to know. We talk about displacement. We need to talk about velocity. Oh, last time your linear velocity, how you talk about ah? Linear velocity. Now we have angle or oh, moving in a circle, so we call this angular velocity. And this is usually we use a symbol omega. Last time we used v for velocity. Now in a circle, right? We call angular velocity. What is angular velocity, miss? Ah, you see, oh, when this thing is moving in a circle, you look at the angle here. The angle is changing, right? Very fast from zero degree become two hundred, three hundred, and very fast. How fast is that angle changing? So last time we will say velocity v is rate of change of displacement. That's how we define linear velocity. Now we tweak our language a bit. We say angular velocity. Ah, this one definition. Maybe you want to write that down. This is the rate of change of displacement. Ah, no, no, no. What displacement in a circle? Rate of change of angular. Must add the angular because now we are talking about arc lengths. Okay, a certain curve. Angular displacement. Mund. Okay, so we drop off this one. So cannot be v ds dt already. It's something else. So when we derive it, we usually say angular velocity rate of change. Ah, we can. I mean, you can either say d theta dt. Sometimes people write as delta change in angle over change in time. The angle changing, right? How fast is it changing? Uh, but I prefer to write d theta dt because it's more mathematically correct. Okay. So omega is d theta dt, which is also the same as if we consider one full circle. Just now we see the thing move round and round, right? I draw here. Okay, let's say we start with here. Then after a certain period of time, your angle have increased, maybe until here now. After some time t, there is one thing that is always true, and that is to complete a full cycle. Full cycle is two pi, right? You go one full cycle, zoop, and then you come back. Uh, one full cycle, we always call the time big T, like wave one full period of oscillation. That is big T. So this is one main equation that we need to remember for circular motion. How to calculate angular velocity? All you need is T. How long it take for one full cycle? So let's label up this thing here. So two pi is the angle. Angle for one full cycle because we're moving in circles remember round and round t here is going to be time period lah time or period of oscillation or i can say period of one cycle so you can calculate that all right the unit here for this thing ah this omega this not w ah omega okay omega this unit here is angle per second because you see this one is two pi divided by time. So sometimes people will write radians per second, or radian is not actually a legit unit. So sometimes you just see people write per second, or per minute, per year. Okay, minute negative one blah 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 things like that lah. Okay, many many start of time. So these are the two main things to start us off with. Let's see what we have so far. So in terms of displacement, velocity, and acceleration, let me rewrite this. We have our old linear kinematics. Okay, so displacement. Last time we do what u t plus half a t square, right? Now it's different already. We change a bit, ah. Uh. So now it's s equals to r theta. Hmm. So we have been able to link. Linear kinematics. I'm gonna label this here. Linear kinematics to angular kinematics. Things that are in a circle, circular measure. What else do we have? Velocity. Is there an equation for velocity? Ah? can we somehow relate relate with omega angular velocity? Hmm. To do that, we need to learn one more term. 
So let's go down here. This last term is what we call linear or tangential velocity. Past years, textbooks they use different terms, so you, they, they mean the same thing. So why is this linear tangential velocity? We we'll go back to the diagram up here. Okay, we have a certain linear displacement. What is this tangential velocity? It means, let's say for example, at point A, look at point A right there. Let's call this um, one dot. At that point, at that moment in time, there is a certain velocity, which looks like this. I try to draw a better arrow. Ah, this is more like it. Okay, this is what we call, usually we label it V, but actually it should be the absolute not absolute the magnitude of the vector of velocity should be this lah okay but we don't write that because we're like ah whatever lah physics we're like okay you got the v can ready lah so this is our tangential or linear velocity sometimes also called speed i'm just going to call this tangential linear speed okay so at that moment this object is actually traveling up at a uh, at the direction so it actually wants to go here in a straight line lah but cannot why? Mm, we'll learn more. There's something pulling it over. And then after a certain point, you will go to position B, which looks something like that. And this V are also the same, you know, it's not changing. Usually it's not changing. I mean, in this case. Okay, so if it's a nice perfect circle, not getting bigger or smaller, you're just going the same path. The V is the same. If here 5 meter per second, here also 5 meter per second. Okay, so that's how the tangential velocity look like. How do we get an equation for it though? What is that V? So... Let's rem just remember a bit. What is speed? Ah? Okay, linear tangential velocity, aka speed. Aka speed of particle at any point along this path. We call speed that value, uh, which is a scalar, by the way. Scalar means that I don't care which direction got the speed can already. Scalar at a position on the, the circular path. This is the definition of it. So, how do we find the equation? S equals to R theta relates displacement with angular displacement, aka angle. So, if you want to find velocity, eh, we can do velocity equals to ds dt, oh, the rate of change of time. So, we divide both sides by time. Or, you want to do it the maths way, we differentiate both sides. So, here, differentiate. Suddenly, you divide by t, lah, okay? You divide by a change in S over a change in t equals to the radius, which doesn't change with time, but the angle is getting bigger and bigger as you are moving like that. So here, a change in angle over a change in time also can be written as a change in angle over a change in time. We just divide, lah, okay? Or differentiate, which is another word to say. It. Okay, so from here, we can come with the final equation because we know that ds dt is velocity so we write here velocity equals to r times d theta dt does not look so nice but we do know that up here what is this thing called angular velocity is the change of angle over time how fast is the angle changing how quickly so this we can write as omega now this is our equation for linear or tangential velocity yeah and the unit is what ah? the unit here is meter per second negative one. To help us understand this a little bit better and how to compare with um, angular velocity, yeah, because they miss got so many velocity. One is omega, one is v, just v only. Okay, let's look at the simulation to help us understand better. So here I have two objects and they are going to go in a circle, the pink and the blue. It's going to be like a clock, lah. Okay, the clock like this. The the, the hand will just go up and then you know clock. Okay, so I set them to be the same angular velocity. You see here, omega 1, one about 1 radian per second. So each second, it will move by 1 radian. The other one, the pink color, also 1 radian per second. So they should be stick together. Lah. So I play, it's how they look like. Okay, angular displacement, you see the angle, they're changing at the same rate. The angle is increasing at the same rate. Now my question for you to think about is, which one do you think is moving faster? The, what do you mean by faster? Ah, the speed. Which one has a larger speed? The one closer to the center or the one further away from the center? Look very carefully. They have the same angular velocity. But look at their linear velocity, their tangential velocity. The speed is different. Oh. The one outside, 
he's moving two times faster than the one inside. See this one, two meter per second, this one one meter. So uh, if you are a clock and you are very far away from the center of the circle, you, you, that part of the, the clock's hand is moving much faster. If you are racing with your friend, choose the smaller radius and run with them. And then you will sure win one. Because you don't need to run very fast, you see. You want one, one meter per second also can keep up with the one outside. But if you're on the outside curve, wow, you have to run much faster to keep up with the angular change. That is angular velocity. So if you want to use the equation to understand, just now we compare two things rotating, right? V equals to R omega. If I set omega to be constant for both of them, means the one that has a larger radius will have a larger tangential velocity because need to move faster to keep up with the change in angle. So this one you can see here is faster on top of my head. Faster. The pink color one, slower in speed. Okay, last. for the V, la, the V is slower, V is faster. Okay, so that's all for the basics of circular motion. The kinematics, ah. remember, we have linear and we have angular. Now we can add to our knowledge already. So S equals to R theta, V equals to R omega. It's linear and angular things. Ah, yeah, I draw a circle. La. This one, all angular, angle, angle one. This one is linear, like, you know, velocity, displacement from that, what we learned in AS. Okay, so in the next part, we'll look at more two more ideas, acceleration and force. And you'll be good to go for the basics to understand the strange world of how things move in a circle. Okay, see you in the next video.